Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA episode 286. I am Brennan. UFC Fight Night, Josh Emmett versus Ilya Tapuria. God, there were some bangers on this card, man. We're going to break down each fight round by round. If you're looking for a specific fight breakdown, the timestamps are down below. Uh, real quick, before we get started, if you like this kind of stuff, you like fight breakdowns, subscribe to the channel so the next video is coming out. I'm also covering... The Ultimate Fighter uh, this season, if you're into that as well, as well as the, the other organizations, PFL, Bellator, 1FC, cover those too. All right, let's look at this fight. Okay, so Ilya Taporia taking on Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett currently ranked, um, let's see here, where is he at? Mm, Emmett was five. Taboria was nine, so I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of if they flip spots after this one. It was just a master class. It really was. They kept saying it, and that's kind of what it turned into. It was just <sighs> there was something about this fight where it felt uh, not a changing of the guard, but showing that Emmett's skill set has its limitations when he hits the elite. And this is this is one of them, right? I mean, he's had success in the past, and he can always catch someone with that right hand and put you out. But <clears throat> this one, it's just <sighs> when you have a guy like Tapuria who stays defensively sound, especially like we saw that very early on, who's staying staying very defensively sound. It's going to be a long night for Emmett. It, it's <sighs> and a guy who also has a good chin. <laughs> in Taporia. It's one of those things where, you know, Emmett's not a bad fighter. He's clearly an excellent fighter. He's one of the best in the world. It's just his skill set hits a wall when it gets to these other, you know, elite fighters. So Emmett was right in his face, walking forward with his head down, using those long strikes early. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, Taporia was keeping that really high, tight guard, not allowed much through in the pocket. Taporia landed a really nice right hook in the first round. Uh, Taporia with the right, uh, the high, like I said, the high tight guard. Uh, Emmett landing uh, two left counter hooks, and that was like his hit. That was his best shot the entire fight. He would land these counter left hooks, and sometimes it would land, sometimes they wouldn't, but most of the time they were not landing. <clears throat> uh, Taporia is mixing up his strikes really well, using the low kicks, keeping the pressure on Emmett. Um, Taporia landed a really nice left uppercut. That was he landed that shot quite a bit as well. Taporia got the better of this first round. It's not a blowout in any, uh, in my opinion. I had a 10-9 for Taporia. If you look at the striking numbers here, 20, 21 to 14 in favor of Taporia. Second round here, Emmett starting to use more of the low kicks, helping slow down some of the output from Taporia. Um, Ilya started landing the right hard right hand. He landed it a few times in this round. Taporia was finding success with it. Um, and Emmett kept kept lunging in with his power punches, and uh, you know Taporia was just countering him and landing much cleaner shots. Taporia landed a hard left and then a right, dropping Emmett for a second in this round. Another right hand from Taporia hurts Emmett again. Emmett was not looking good after this round. Looking the striking numbers here, thirty to nineteen in favor of Ilya. Yeah, it was just it was starting to get away from Emmett in this round. The 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 power that Emmett carries just wasn't translating because he wasn't landing those shots he, he was winding up a lot he wasn't getting himself in a good position he was fighting off his back foot he wasn't able to pressure him it, there was a lot a lot that he was trying to do and you could see that he was trying to work on it but Taporia just had an answer every time he moved forward <coughs> all right uh Emmett was looking uh was taking a couple steps he was just looking a couple steps behind. Anytime he was reaching out there for a strike, Taporia would uh, make him pay. Um, they get these exchanges along the fence, and Emmett is landing, especially when, with the left hook, but Taporia returns with just as much, if not more. His third round was a much better round. Um, it would it, It's hard for me to give it to Emmett, but if you gave this third round to Emmett, I could understand. Uh, Taporia just keeps landing with more volume. And you look at the numbers here, 37 to 31. It was Emmett's best round, his most successful round, and had the whole fight been like this, it would have been a much closer affair. Uh, it's just not, that's not the way it played out. 
Him looking better in this fourth round. That's because Taporia is just not putting as much out there early in the round. A uh, low kick from Taporia starts to hurt Emmett. And then a left uppercut lands and Emmett goes down. And then a right hand and then he's down again. Emmett somehow back up and Taporia dominates the end of the round. I had it at 10-8. I had this round at 10-8. So uh, that's a 40 to 35 as of right now. And then Emmett bouncing around, landing a couple hard hooks. He's just, he's got the a crazy will. He really wants to get in there and he wants to mix it up and he doesn't want to, he's not giving up at, at, at all. But Taporia ends up going for a takedown and then he rides out the win on top. So that's the end of the round. Taporia winning that last one uh, as well. Uh, 50 to 45 would be my, would be my guess. So, <clears throat> Looking at these scorecards, a little uh, something a little interesting to talk about here. So Saul Diamato um, scoring it exactly how I scored it. Um, Eric Cologne giving giving that first round to uh, Emmett. I don't agree with that. I think that's a little off. I don't know what he saw there. But the craziest scorecard here, even though he got the got it right overall, and who should win was Christopher Lee. Someone needs to talk about this. He gave to Puria. Okay. Again, we've been talking about bad scorecards a lot lately. And Christopher Lee has been at the head of a lot of them. Look at his scorecard, guys. First round, absolutely. Nothing wrong there. Second round, nothing wrong. Third round. Are you telling me Emmett's best round, the round you could argue that Emmett maybe won, I, I don't. I don't think he won it, but there's an argument there that maybe you think he landed enough damage down the stretch to take the win in that round. You think that Tapuria got a 10-8 in that round, and then you gave him a 10-7 in round four. That's neither here nor there. If you want to give him a 10-7, that's fine. I don't think that's crazy. It's just it's weird to me. I didn't feel like he... You know, it wasn't that Emmett was getting battered and beaten the entire time. He got caught near the end of the round and, you know, he was getting beaten up. So a 10-8 is warranted and all three judges at least gave him that. But a 10-7, it's a little weird, but that's, again, defensible. There's nothing wrong with that one. And then obviously the last round. But round three, a 10-8, bringing his score total, bringing his score total to 50 to 42. Never heard that one before. I've never even seen that before. That's that's crazy. This is a bad scorecard again from Chris Lee. Bad scorecard. I want I want an explanation as to why he thinks this was a 10-8 round in round three. Did you guys see something that I didn't? Maybe I'm crazy, but I don't think so. Oy. Great fight though, right? Great, uh, great fight. It, it's a it was a great showcase for Taboria, and it's an unfortunate. I think it's an end for the content uh, for Emmett contending for a title. I really do. I think he had his moment and he probably should. He was in that, that time where Max Holloway, you know, kept getting the, the title shot rematch and he should have Max Holloway is the second best guy in this division. And so what are we going to end up with here? Okay. <clears throat> Tapori is undefeated. And he just beat the number five guy in the world. I fully expect him to bounce up here. Um, and he said he wants to fight for a title eliminator or a title shot. He wants a title shot. So he thinks that he has what it takes. He wants to go fight Volkanovsky. So he'll probably skip Max Holloway. And if the UFC wants to make an interesting matchup, they're going to skip him. They're not going to make him fight Max. Because he has the skills to beat Max Holloway but he might not <laughs> like he might not beat him in all reality. Cause you're looking at the top, the top five here uh, outside of Calvin Cater, right? Well, Chang Sung Jung is fighting Max Holloway soon, but look at these guys. Yeah. Your Rodriguez is fighting for the title. He lost to Max Holloway. Like if him and Max Holloway fought again, like you could fully expect Max Holloway to win. And now he's the interim champion. Like, do you know what I mean? Uh, he put a beating on Ortega. He beat Arnold Allen. I fully expect he could beat Josh Emmett. That's the thing. It's like he's turned back so many guys. Um, oh, Calvin Cater, number six. He beat him. He's turned back so many guys that it makes it hard for the matchmakers to, at least for hardcore fans, people who pay attention to the sport, 
and understand the history and the matchmaking and the pat like how um the the rankings have been right so with someone like Max Holloway the previous champion who people might not know and then also his competitive uh competitive couple fights with Volkanovski and then Volkanovski just tooling him in the third one and then how far ahead Max Holloway is to everyone else in the division and you're like oh okay so Nobody in this division <laughs> really deserves a title shot except for Max Holloway, but we have to manufacture it, so let's work around him, which is what we're doing here. Because Yair Rodriguez, even though he's technically ranked as the number one uh, contender, that's just because he won the interim belt, and that was just made up so that they could um, kind of do a placeholder uh, title shot. Anyway, a great fight, by the way. If you did not watch... Uh, this car did have some good fights on it. I do recommend watching it. Uh, it's uh, there's some unfortunate there's an unfortunate thing here, but really great card. Go watch the main card at least if you didn't uh, at least put it on in the background because it's a good one. Amanda Hebas taking on Macy Barber. Amanda Hebas going up a weight class here. Clearly, she was outsized. I did not see her winning this fight. I she was she's not a power puncher. She's not a crazy grappler. She's just a a scrappy all around good fighter. And you know Macy Barber is just bigger. And even if she's not better in all those areas, she's at least as good. So I I expected her to win. Uh, low kicks from both women. Uh, Barber landing a decent right hand. Hebas still going uh, for the low kicks. Uh, Hebas was right in her face uh, early on, landing some uh, <clears throat> some really. She's landing some good one twos. Uh, in the clinch, Barber lands a hard elbow with her back to the fence that busts uh, Hebas's nose open. Um, <clears throat> not open, sorry. It busted up, so there was blood coming out of her nose. And then Hebas went for the headlock uh, to the knee bar. Barber punishes her from top to end the round. Barber's round with a ton of visible damage. If you look at the, the striking numbers here, 35 to 22 in favor of Barber. Easy, easy to call that one. Uh, second round, Hebas countering a kick with a right hand. She landed this multiple times. Barber, uh, Barber lands the elbow in the clinch again. Then Hebas counters with a one-two and makes Macy Barber's nose start to bleed. Uh, Hebas gets the headlock, the headlock takedown again. And then... Uh, Hebas counters another kick with the, oh yeah he does that right hand again Barber gets up lands a hard right hand uh, Hebas countered uh, another kick with a hard right hand and dropped Barber Barber gets back up like I said lands a hard right hand of her own she lands a head kick and then Hebas starts get, like and then she gets wobbled and starts getting pounded pounded out so 46 to 13 here in this last round um, then Barber obviously getting the TKO finish Excellent win for her. Uh, where does she sit? Mandy Hebas was 11. Oh, that's at straw weight. What am I looking at? Yeah, Mandy Hebas was at 11. Macy Barber was also at 11. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> Mandy Hebas is at 9 at flyweight? Weird. Anyway, she'll probably jump jump the rankings there. I, I she might even hop ahead some of these other women who haven't fought in a while. Another another good fight. <clears throat> Legit, it was fun to watch. I will right, we'll talk about this one for just a second here. It's kind of stupid. Um, Austin uh, Austin Lane versus Justin Taffa. Not much to talk about here, guys. Um, Lane was looking for the jab and uh, looking. Looking to light, uh, land that right hand, really bad eye poke from Lane as they moved in. It was it was totally unintentional. It was one of those ones where he didn't even he wasn't even extending his hand. Tafa went in. Tafa moved in, and Lane could didn't even have time to make a fist because his it, again you should be you should be closing your fist at all times and blah 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 whatever. But Tafa moves in and legit guys this it was like this far into the eye like two knuckles deep into that eye and he, you know, his eye starts bleeding. He can't see. We spend like three minutes dicking around four minutes, dicking around. Uh, and then they call the fight off because uh, Tafa can't see out of it. <clears throat> I hold no grudge against either one of those guys. Um, it's just unfortunate that it happens because it looked like that fight was going to be fun. All right. David Onama taking on uh, Gabriel Santos. This fight was fun too. 
Uh, Santos going with the low kicks to start. Santos was um, landing a right hand early. Both guys landing left hook. Santos going for a double, but he ends up on his back. Uh, Onama landing his jab when he puts it out there, but he's just not thrown out there enough for me. Like I thought he could use it even more than he already was. A huge left hand <clears throat> lands after the body kick from Santos, and another one hurts Onama. Uh, Santos dives in on an arm bar. Onama gets out of it twice. A uh, big right hand lands from Onama to end the round. Santos gets a beautiful single leg, and that's the end of it. So 27 to 25 in favor of Onama. I actually gave Santos this round because of the submission attempts as well. They were close, you know, deep submission attempts as well as rocking Onama and landing out, uh, landing enough damage uh, <clears throat> of his own. So I gave it 10-9 to Santos. Scorecard does not matter. Santos landing a hard spinning back fist and Onama lands a right hand. Um, they're both rocking each other back and forth. Santos going for the back, um, gets it with the body triangle right away, but Onama gets out of the back control, stays on top, landing some good ground and pound. Um, they get back up. Onama landed uh, some really hard one twos. And, pop, pop. and Onama landed a really hard uppercut and Santos is out. Uh, he landed, oh man, he, uh, and then he did the styler, style bender arrow celebration. I don't know what that's from or why why that carries over. I don't get that. Uh, maybe I missed something. Great win for Onama. He, the, he, the dude's tough as shit. He's got a crazy chin. He hits hard. He's got a long reach. He's a hard guy to get out of there. So, I mean, he's a tough out for anybody. Onama's, Onama's legit. All right, Brendan Allen taking on Bruno Silva. Again, another banger. This one was fun, too. <clears throat> a nice lead left hook reaches Silva, then a left head kick lands partially for Allen. Um, Allen landing a nice body kick and pressing him to the cage. Brendan landing a hard right elbow in the clinch. Silva landed a hook somewhere that hurt Allen at one point when they were uh, in tight. Then Allen hurt Silva back in the mid-barrage, right? So Silva's unloading some hooks, and Allen somewhere in there landed something that uh, hurt Silva back. Then Brendan landed a hard left hand that rocked. Uh, he landed a hard left hook that rocked Silva. Uh, two big right hands from Brendan dropping Silva after taking a few of his own. And then Allen taking the back in the rear naked choke without even having the hooks in and then throwing the hooks in after or one hook in afterwards and getting the submission finish. 30 to 20 for the significant strikes. Brendan Allen's legit. Uh, like he's, he's a really good fighter. He's only got two losses in the UFC, guys. Two losses. He's got wins over Kevin Holland, Tom Breeze back in the day. That's not a bad one. Kyle Dawkins again, when he was on that run. He's got a loss to Sean Strickland, one of the top-ranked guys. Uh, a win over Carl Robertson. Puna Haley Soriano, that's a good win. Um, a loss to Chris Curtis. And again, another top-ranked guy. Wins over Sam Alvey. Jacob Malkoon, that's a, oh, that, you know, that's a good win. Malkoon's a tough guy to beat. Uh, with Christoph Jocko. It's a savvy veteran. Andre Muniz, that's a fine win. And then Bruno Silva. Like, I think he's, what, ranked number 15? In the middleweight division? No, 13. He's ranked number 13 in the middleweight division. I mean, he called for it. <clears throat> you know, he, he called for the... He called, he, he called for the title shot or the title eliminator. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't necessarily think that he's earned it compared to some of these other people up here. But with one more win, putting him in the title picture, absolutely, uh, especially if it's in the top top ten here. And he said after this, he or said before this, he's like, I'm done fighting people who are ranked below me. I'm understandable, you know, that he's done that quite a few times now. And you know, maybe the UFC sees something that he's not paying attention to, right? Like maybe the UFC is like, hey, dude, you're probably not ready for this yet. But he also made another good point. He's one of the youngest guys. He think he's the youngest guy in the top fifteen, and he's got some of the most most fights. Yeah, he's pretty young. <sighs> so, you know, I I think he's got a point and to, a means to an end. But he said, you know, he wants to be the the new champion in twenty twenty four. Um, that is feasible. One more win against somebody in the top five, uh, possibly a top 10, but for sure if he beats someone in the top five, right? Uh, another win over, <clears throat> you know, if he fights a Derek Brunson, if Brunson still wants to fight, or um, I don't think a Roman Delite fight does anything for him. 
<clears throat> Apollo Costa fight. Uh, so Drikus and Whitaker are fighting. He said he'll take one of them, right? He'll say he'll take the the winner of that fight. Even the loser of that fight, <clears throat> like let's say he just fights Drikus. Uh, he said he'll fight Jared Cannonier. That would be a good fight. Marvin Vittori would be a good fight, but you know he's coming off a loss. Here's the thing, though, against anybody here in the top five, Alex Pajeda's. I don't think he's going to be a middleweight anymore. So they still got him in the rankings for some reason. But whatever. Do I see him e like easily beating anybody up here? No. Uh, I mean, he's already got a loss to Sean Strickland. Paul Acosta is a nightmare for him. Drikus, I think Drikus is a winnable fight for anybody here in the top 10. You just got to make it through the blitz and then make it like, cause he's going to tire himself out and then keep your cardio up. Uh, if I, I think he's, he, the blueprint to beat uh, Duplessis is there, but no, but the people he fought just didn't play into it. I don't know why. Uh, Vittori is a tough fight for him too. Vittori is just, you know, he's going to be a dog. He's not going to go anywhere. And if your cardio doesn't hold up against him, you're in trouble. Cannoneer is a rough fight. Yeah. And Whitaker is a nightmare for everybody in the division because Whitaker beat everybody in the division. So not name is Jalada Sanya. All right. Uh, but that's it. I thought it was a great fight night. If you didn't watch it, I do recommend going back and watching it. I know that uh, fight nights aren't everybody's cup of tea. People might just sit around and wait. There are some bangers on this one, guys. Uh, start to finish, I think the main card was worth it. So if you want to even just click on that and then watch through each one, it's pretty good. Yeah, this did not disappoint. This is a great card, fun to watch. Uh, if you guys like this kind of stuff, you like Fight Breakdown, subscribe to the channel so you know the next video is coming out. If you're looking for the prelims, I'll put that out in the next video. I covered the PFL from this week um, earlier earlier this weekend. Um, like I said, I'm at the beginning, I'm covering the, the ultimate fighter. So if you want to watch those videos, those are up and I'm covering that every single week as the new episodes drop. So follow along with that series. If you'd like, love y'all have an amazing week.